जय जगन जय बलदेव जय सुभन जय गोरानी 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 जय गोरानी जय जय प्रभु फाल प्रभु फाल प्रभु फाल जय प्रभु फाल जय जय प्रभु फार प्रभु फार प्रभु फार शील प्रभु फार गोफे बनानी हाय हाय वो जय ओम विष्णु फार फॉरम हंग सो फॉर द प्रोजेक्ट आज आज से तरस से श्री शिवा इस कॉन बी विथ फाउंडर चार्ज ऑफ माइंड ग्रेस एसी बॉक्स विद अंत सोम महाराज पर पर की जाए चिला बॉक्स से धान से सर सोते ठाकुर पर पर की जाए आना तक होती भाई शिव बिंद की जाए नाम चार्ज ऑफ शिला हरि दास ठाकुर की जाए प्रेम से को होश के चेतन प्रभु दे दान एंड शेयर वे टू गेट आवर धार श्री वहां से गोर बक्त बिंद की जाए श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपना शामकुंड राधा कुंड गिर गोवर्धन की जाए श्री ब्रजभूमि नाम नाम की जाए श्री नाबरी माय पुर धाम की जाए श्री लाचा जगन्नाथ पुर धाम की जाए गंगा मई की जाए चमुन मई की जाए भक्ति देवी की जाए श्रीमती तुलसी महारानी की जाए द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल वर्शिप श्री श्री मेनी द्वार की जाए श्री श्री मेनी द्वार के नाथ की जाए श्री श्री जगन्नाथ बालदेव सुभद्र की जाए श्री श्री गोनेथाय की जाए समावेत भक्त वृंद की जाए गोइंग बैक टू होम बैक टू गॉड हेड की जाए इस कान लॉस एंजलिस यात्रा की जाए Brihad Madanga Transcendental Book Distribution Ki Jai International Food for Life Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Ki Jai Shri Hari Naam Sankirtan Ki Jai Nithai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gorang Guru Shri Prabhupada नारायण नमस्कृत नर चाय नरोत्तम देवी सारस्वती व्यास बिफोर साइडिंग द श्रीमद भागवतम विच इज आर वेर मीन्स ऑफ कॉन्क्वेस्ट लेट अस ऑफर रिस्पेक्टफुल बेसिस ऑन टू द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड लॉर्ड नारायण ऑन टू नार नारायण ऋषि टू सुपर मोस्ट ह्यूमन बींग ऑन टू मदर सारस्वती गॉड इज ऑफ लर्निंग ऑन टू शील व्यास देव द ऑथर and on to shila prabhu who's a translator commentator and our spiritual master nashta prayeshu bhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavata uttama shloka bhakti bhavati naishtiki by regularly attending the shiva bhagavatam class and by rendering service unto the pure devotee all that is trouble comes to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving devotional service unto the personality of god at whose worship with transcendental songs becomes established as an irrevocable fact om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya So we're continuing our reading from the third canto of the Shrimad Bhagavatam. This is chapter 13, the appearance of Lord Varaha. Today's text is 30. Kurai Shura Prayer Tarayang Tad Apa Utpara Param Tripuru Rasayam Tadarsha गा तत्र सुषुप्सुर 
अग्रे याम जीव धानीम स्वयं अभ्यदत्त कुराइक्षुरप्रायदायंसराप उत्पारपारंग त्रिपरुरसायाम तराशगंग चत्रस शुभसुरग्रे यंग जीवधानिम स्वयं अभ्यदत्त कुराइक्षुरप्रायदायंसराप Utpara parang shiparu rasayam Dadarshagang tatra sushupsura gre Yang jiva dhanin swayam abhyatata Kuraikshura praya dharayang stadapa Utpara parang shiparu rasayam Tadarshagang tatra susupshura gre Yang jiva dhanin swayam abhyatata Please chant. Vaishnavis, Kuraik Shura Prayer Dharayang Sadapa Udpara Parang Shiparu Rasaya Dadarshagang Tatra Sushupsur Agre Yam jiva dhanim swayam abhyadhat Kuraik shura prayar dharayang sadapa Udpara parang shiparu rasayam Tadarshagang tatra susupshura gre Yang jiva dhanim swayam abhyadatta So, synonyms. Kurai, by the hooves. Shura prai, compared to a sharp weapon. Tarayan, penetrating. Tat. That. Apaha. Water. 
Utparaparam. Found the limitation of the unlimited. Triparuhu. The master of all sacrifices. Rasayam. Within the water. Tadarsha. Found. Gam. The earth. Tatra. There. Susupsuhu. Lying. Agre. In the beginning. Yam. Whom. Jivadhanim. The resting place for all living entities. Swayam. Personally. Abhyadatta. Uplifted. So, Srila Prophet's translation for this verse. Lord Bor penetrated the water with his hooves, which were like sharp arrows, and found the limits of the ocean, although it was unlimited. He saw the earth, the resting place for all living beings, lying as it was in the beginning of creation, and he personally lifted it. Please repeat. Lord Bor penetrated the water with his hooves, which were like sharp arrows, and found the limits of the ocean, although it was unlimited. He saw the earth, the resting place for all living beings, lying as it was in the beginning of creation, and he personally lifted it. Shall Prophet's purport. The word Rasayam is sometimes interpreted to mean Rasatala, the lowest planetary system, but that is not applicable in this connection. According to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the earth is seven times superior to the other planetary systems, namely Tala, Atala, Talatala, Vitala, Rasatala, Patala, and so on. There are two Talas missing because there are seven going down. Who, who knows the two that are missing? From this list. Properly listed one, two, three, four, five, six, actually. There's one missing. Sutala, yes. And the significance of Sutala is and Vamanadev. Yeah, Vamanadev is the doorkeeper of Bali Maharaj on that Sutala planetary system. Continuing. Therefore, the earth cannot be situated in the Rasatala planetary system. It is described in the Vishnu Dharma. Patala Muleshwara Bhoga Sanghatao. Vinyasya pado priti ving chabhibrataha. Yasyo papmano nababhuva sochito. Mamastu mangalya vivridhaye harihi. Which means, Prabhupada didn't give the full translation, but it stated, Therefore the Lord found the earth on the bottom of the Garbadak ocean, where the planets rest during the devastation at the end of Brahma's day. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Nitinamane, Namaste, Saraswate Deve, Gauravani Pacharine, Nirvashesha Shunyavadi Pascha Chideshtarine, Om Agyana Timuranda Syagyana Njana Shalakaya, Chakshur Unmilitam Jaina, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Manobishang, Shapi Tang Jaina Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Dadati Sopadatikam, Vandeya Hang, Shri Guru, Shri Yutapada Kamalam, Shri Guru and Vaishavascha, Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Ragana Tanmatam Tang Sajiva Sadvaitam Savadutam Purjana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Matangscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Dabosate Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriye Pancha kalpaturubhya sha kripa sindhubhya eva cha patitanang pavane pyo vaishnave pyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So for those of us coming up through the Christian tradition we've heard that man is made in the image of God Yes, you've heard that. So similarly, the modern hog or pig form is made in the image of the original godly or God-expanded form. This is another reason why we don't accept this modern um, Darwinian evolution theory. 
Many religious scholars, so-called, religionists, as Prophet would say, have acquiesced to this Darwinian viewpoint. They say they believe in God. God set the whole thing in motion by giving them material ingredients, and then evolution took place. That's how they they have acquiesced to the scientific viewpoint. But we say no. We've heard previously how the elements are generated. And now, here is this boar form. Already there are living beings, highly advanced living beings, starting with Lord Brahma, and the residents of those higher planets that don't get submerged during the partial devastation. And now here's this original hog form, pig form didn't evolve gradually from material elements combining and some or other becoming conscious and then simple life forms, but no, immediately the most complicated, most complex life forms are generated. So the Lord has appeared here as a boar. A boar is nowadays classified as one of the hooved ungulates. There are two classifications of hooved ungulates, those who have uneven or odd number toes and those that have uh, um, two, two, or two toes. So the cows, for instance, and the pigs, they have two, their hooves are divided in two. But then you have animals like rhinoceroses, horses, they have odd number. Horses one, rhinoceros, they have three, like that. But again, this is not something that is evolving over time. Immediately, this hog form has appeared. He has two hooves, two toes in the hoof. And with those two toes as mentioned here, he's diving into the ocean, separating the ocean like arrows, sharp arrows. And finding, very nice phrase that's mentioned here, the limits of the unlimited. Again, the modern scholars, they think that this is all just beautiful poetry that somebody sat down and dreamt up, Vyasadeva and other sages, but no. This is factual. We accept this as being factual. We have to accept. Otherwise, we will remain bewildered. Quite often, although we've taken to this path, we're so brainwashed, or no, actually the brain muddied, that we still deep in our, some recess corner of our intelligence, our minds, we are still holding on, clinging to this Darwinian evolution theory. So when we hear something like this, the limits of the unlimited, how does that make any sense? Yes, because Krishna can do anything. He can make something unlimited and find a limit of it. He can make a stone that's so heavy that he can't lift it and the next moment he can lift it. Because this is one of the arguments that the atheists use. You say your God can do anything. Can he make a stone that's so heavy that he can't lift it? We say yes. Then how can he be God if he can't lift it? Because the very next moment he'll lift it. He can do anything he wants. So here is found... The limits of the unlimited. In other words, as we'll hear later on, or we've heard already many times, this universe that we're living in is spherical in shape. And half of it is filled up with water. Where did all that water come from? Yes, from the perspiration of carbon dioxide Vishnu. We perspire a little bit, but not enough to fill even a cup. But when the Lord perspires, it fills half the universe with water. And all the planets that we can see, everything that's visible to us, is in the upper half of that, the, the open space. So that half-filled universe, that's the water that he dove into. And for practical purposes, it's unlimited. We, can, we cannot find a limit of it. Unlimited can be easily understood. If I asked any one of you, just go to one beach, let's say Venice Beach, and don't come for prasadam until you've counted every grain of sand on that beach. Would you be able to do it? You can. Just one beach. One beach has so, much, so many grains of sand. From our perspective, it's unlimited. So when they say, nowadays they give you estimates. It's just an estimate. It's just an estimate. Like they take a bucket of water and they calculate that the ocean has three million or three billion buckets in it, and that's the volume of the ocean. But it's just an estimate. You cannot, for all practical intents and purposes, find out the limit of even the Pacific Ocean, or to speak of all the other oceans combined. So the limit of the unlimited, very nice poetry, but it's not just poetic, it's a fact. Because from our perspective, 
everything is unlimited, even the grains of sand on one beach. And if some other you can count that, okay, let me take you to Hawaii, count the sands on all the beaches in Hawaii. You see, you can't, you can't. So it's from our perspective, practically everything is unlimited. Unfortunately, one thing that's also unlimited is our attachment to this material world. In spite of getting smashed repeatedly, birth after birth, we still come out in another birth thinking, I'm going to enjoy this time. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to figure it all out. You old people, you don't understand. Now, let me show you how to enjoy it. And we get smashed again and again. This is called mudha. A mudha is a person who just can't get it, even when you show them. Prophet said, the intel first class intelligent person is one who learns by hearing. The teacher, the father, the mother, whatever guru says, this is how it is. You hear once and you accept it and you know for life. Second class, they hear and then they have to experience. Fire will burn you. They hear and until they touch fire once, they don't really accept it. But after touching once, they will never touch again because now they've experienced it. The last class, third class, mudha, they get burned over and over and over again and they still keep trying. Still keep trying. That's mudha. We've been in this material world since time immemorial and getting burned repeatedly, smashed repeatedly and still trying to enjoy in the same way. Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. So this is mudha. So only the Lord can find the limit of that unlimited ignorance and smash it. We can't do that on our own. We cannot. Because the material energy which is presenting these mudha propositions is too powerful. We've seen repeatedly in our own society and from the history of the world, great, great personalities have risen very, very high in terms of knowledge and yogic powers, you name it, and still the material energy is able to allure them, pull them down from that position. So we shouldn't try. Don't try to go it alone. You cannot make it alone on the spiritual path. You have to take shelter of Krishna through the spiritual master. Otherwise, we just fall repeatedly. Um, yeah, this is a place where there's danger at every step. But last night I had a reminder. Every night, usually about somewhere between 10.30 and midnight, I come out, throw away my garbage, make sure things are locked up, especially if I don't see anybody on duty. So last night I did that. I came out, threw away the garbage. And then crossing the street, coming back to this side, somebody drove by and I was thinking, I recognize that person. And I'm not watching what I'm doing. So I'm trying to step on the sidewalk, clip my edge of my foot on the side, and went flying. Did a face plant, as we say nowadays here. That's not a face palm. A face palm is when you go like, ah. but a face plant is when you fall face down. So <laughs> fell face down on the sidewalk and the person was saying, are you okay? So danger at every step, inattention. So it's the same thing on the spiritual path. If you don't pay attention, you're going to fall, guaranteed. So the first thing is, as we chant every morning, one of the offenses to the chanting of the Hare Krishna is to be inattentive while chanting. So inattention shouldn't be there in any aspect, not just while chanting, while walking, while speaking, while cutting vegetables. As I've told you many times in New York, when we went and brought, I don't know if you got corralled into the kitchen in New York, but I did. And they taught you how to cut sabji very precisely. The cooks there were very particular. Agni Dave and so many others. Very, very good cooks we had there. Apoorva. And Harikesh even was there. He was cooking sometimes. And they taught you, potatoes have to be cut precisely in little cubes, all matching, because they don't cook evenly if you don't do that. Tomatoes. So they told us, what mantra, they said, pay attention while slicing the tomatoes. We don't want your blood in Krishna Sabji. So this paying attention, is that's actually meditation. Paying attention to whatever service you're given, that is meditation. Not that you're doing a service and you're meditating on something. No, meditation means meditating on the service that you're doing. Whether it's cutting subji or distributing books or making books or whatever your service is serving the deities concentrate on that that's meditation not that i'm doing it i'm waving the incense but my mind is in my poor you know not like that you precisely do the incense precisely uh, wave the fan nicely concentrate on that don't let your mind drag you elsewhere as krishna says in the bhagavad-gita don't let 
your mind drag you away from the yogic process, what, which is whatever you're doing, whatever serves we're given, that is yoga. Yoga is not only some asana or chanting mantras, that's mantra yoga, which is our main thing, but whatever we're doing, that's yoga. That's yoga, whether it's sweeping. Again, I, I really appreciate the training we got in Henry Street, New York, because everything was, because they had, you know, they were the next generation, first generation before us, well, most of them, before them, or even those like Mukunda Maharaj, who met Prabhupada before there was an ISKCON. But most of the devotees at Henry Street, they had personal experience with Prabhupada, and they learned from Prabhupada how to do things precisely, and they taught us precisely how to sweep, how to clean, how to cut sabji, how to chant. Everything was pretty precise. And so this, this is what we have to pass on to the next generation, next generation. <clears throat> In this community, we have a nice mixture of 50-year disciples of Prabhupada, like Savas Prabhu and his dear wife, Tadit. And then you have middle ground, and have, we have new people here, who are just coming along. So the duty of the elders is to pass on intact, in total, whatever they've learned. That's your whole duty. If you can do that, you can die peacefully. Whatever you've learned, pass it on. And we have good examples of that, like Brigapati Prabhu, who's been distributing books for decades after decades. And whenever a new person comes, he's always very eager to train them how to go out on the streets and distribute books. So that should be there in every department. If you go into the kitchen, don't go in with the mentality of figuring it out. No. Find a cook who knows how to cook and learn from them. Like we're very fortunate. We have some here like Guna Bhati Mataji. She's been cooking for the deities for decades. So if you're a new cook, you go to Guna. Or if you go on the altar, you go to Guna. <laughs> so like that. Everything has to be trained. We are not allowed to figure anything out. Unless the spiritual master tells you. Like when Prophet asked the devotees to start printing a magazine in New York. They had no experience of printing anything. Prophet said, just do it. Krishna will give you the intelligence. So that's a different situation. But generally speaking, most of the services that we do on a daily basis, they've been done for decades. So you don't have to figure it out. You don't have to go on the altar and figure out what to do. Ask the devotees who've been doing it for decades. How do I do this? What to do? What are the prayers that I should chant at this point? Da, da, da. This is how we learn. This is how we travel. And um, so, yeah, so Lord Bohr, the original Bohr form, not something that evolved from combination of material elements. And he is penetrating, finding the, penetrating the ocean at the bottom of the, <clears throat> of the universe, finding the limit of the unlimited. And in this particular in, uh, appearance, the earth is placed there, as mentioned, because that's where most of the planets are placed at, during this partial devastation. So this is not apparently the result of Hiranyaksha. And therefore, it's stated that these two different appearances are being amalgamated into one. One time he comes, he picks up the earth that had been fallen there because of that partial devastation. Another time, he comes when Hiranyaksha throws the earth out of its orbit by taking out all the gold, extracting all the gold. So nowadays, we're, we're actually traveling in a on a shaky spaceship because they're extracting all the liquid gold, as they call it, oil. They're taking all the oil out of the <laughs> earth and they're thinking there'll be no repercussions, no ramifications at all. The so-called scientific community, they always give in to the money makers by saying that everything they do is okay, practically. For decades, they were telling people that, don't worry, cigarette smoking is okay, no problem. Because they were being paid by this cigarette industry, tobacco industry, to say that. And then when it became so obvious that it's not good, that people are dying from lung cancer and stuff, then finally they had to say, oh yes, we just did a study and it's... So for years they've been telling us that there's no problem taking oil out of the earth, but the day will come when they finally have to fess up. Yeah, yes, it's not good taking all this oil out of the earth. And the vast, ma this is a sad part, the vast majority of the oil that they take out of the earth is wasted. People just cruising around, spacing out. People racing cars. How much fuel is wasted on a daily basis just racing cars? I want to see how fast my car goes. So I go to a track and I, and it's not just professional racers. Even ordinary people nowadays, you can pay $50, whatever, go to some racetrack and just to see how fast your car will go. <clears throat> Wasting so much gas. And then when it runs out, they go, what happened? Where is all the gas? You wasted most of it. Wasted most of it. So Kali Yuga means the age at which people engage in stupid, rascal, mood-high activities, and they still can't figure it out. They go in the environment with their ATVs, 
again, wasting gas, they tear up the, and then they have to come back later on and spend billions of dollars to re, you know, replant trees and fix the environment that they tore up foolishly. So we shouldn't be enamored by or fooled by any of the rascal activities that goes on in Kali Yuga. Just hear from those who know, Srila Prabhupada, who told us that this is not good. In 50, 60 years, whatever, this oil society is going to, and it's already happening and people are not paying attention. The Saudis, who supposedly have the largest deposit of oil on the planet, they are actually publicly starting to say that we're afraid we're going to run out pretty soon. They're starting to say that. We're going to run out of oil pretty soon. So don't become enamored of this oil-dependent society. We depend on Krishna. We take shelter of Krishna. So when I fell on my face last night, it reminded me of that verse, which is one of the first Bhagavatam verses that I learned because Prabhupada said it so many times. That for those who take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, which are like a boat, and who's called Morari, the enemy of the Mura demon, and Prophet explained he's not really enemy, he is the slayer of the Mura demon, but when you're killed by God, that's good for you. Because then your, all of your Muda tendencies are killed right there and you get liberation. So for one who has done that, if you take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, Mahat Padam, Punya Yesho Murari, Bhava Ambudi. <clears throat> Ambudi means ocean. Just like we recite in the Shikshastaka. It's an ocean. Ananda Ambudi. <clears throat> ocean of Ananda, bliss. <clears throat> So Baba Ambudi means ocean of birth and death. That's where we are situated right now. We're drowning <clears throat> repeatedly in this ocean of birth and death. Baba Ambudi Vatsapadam. So that ocean of birth and death becomes reduced to the amount of water in a calf's footprint. And how many toes do the calves have? All right. No. Calf. The cow has cloven hoof, it's called. Two, two toes. So when a calf makes a footprint, there are two little holes. So the ocean of birth and death is reduced to the amount of water in those two little holes. And the implication is that you can easily step over that. No problem. Even the bio, where is he? You can step over a calf's footprint. No problem. Parampadam yavipadam. Not, so the destination of one who takes shelter of Krishna's lotus feet is parampadam, the spiritual world, where there's no misery, and there's no birth and death. Not Padam Padam, this place where there's danger at every step, like I was reminded last night. Just a little clip of the shoe on the sidewalk. So material life is like that. You're floating along thinking everything is all, but one little mistake and you die or something happens. So <clears throat> let us go on hearing about the appearance of Lord Varaha <clears throat> and all the other incarnations of the Lord we know. From the second can from the first canto, that there is a long list, but they're actually the list is unlimited. But out of all of those, Krishna is the source of all of the incarnations. That's that's the implication for us. That's the takeaway for us that we hear about all the incarnations, but Krishna is the supreme source of all incarnations. So we can stop here. We have a couple of minutes. Not Brigopati, your hand always goes up first. And I've been telling him for years, let the young devotees get a chance to ask questions, or maybe one of the ladies, if you want to ask a question before Brigopati. We know he has something good. He always has something good. No, you're also in the same category. None of the younger devotees, Justin or Amber, not so young anymore, but still. Okay. Wait. Haribo. How do you explain the fossil record? How do you explain the fossil record? The false what? The fossil record. Because the fossil record. How do I explain it? Yeah, how does that not prove evolution? It doesn't, and they themselves will tell you that, because there are too many gaps. In other words, they're taking what they find, <clears throat> and as <coughs> excuse me, our BI personalities like Juta Karma like to say, this entire scientific, modern scientific presentation is based on two things, stones and bones. So they dig into the earth, they find some arrangement of stones, and oh, 
Lo and behold, thousands of years ago, people could build houses out of stone. Hello. <laughs> What's the big deal? And then they find some bones. And oh, just see, this shows a human-like creature. It's not a chimpanzee, but it's not a modern human, so it must be something in between. But it's all just speculation. As far as we're concerned, yes, all those species are distinct. They're not transforming into each other. Species don't change into each other. There may be some minute variation, as in the case of the famous Galapagos finches. Minute variation, but they remain finches. The beaks change. Some had cross beaks, some had bigger beaks, smaller beaks. But they remain finches. They didn't become eagles or seagulls. or They remain finches. They didn't change. So that's the, the main point that we present, that species don't turn into other species. You don't have a little mouse that gradually changes into a cat that changes into a human being. It doesn't happen. Cats always give birth to cats. Dogs give birth to dogs. Birds give birth to birds. Variety of birds give birth to the same variety. Parrots will always give birth to parrots. They'll never give birth to eagles. So that's how we explain the fossil record. Now, yes, you're finding all these bones, and based on your, you know, your paleontology, you're thinking that they're transforming into something else, but they don't. A rat, rat bones will always be found with other rat bones or whatever. They don't transform into gorilla bones or something else. So we're not impressed when they find something, because they're always changing. Just the, the, the latest change of what they used to say. They used to say, and they used to depict them, these big dinosaurs like T-Rex, they, they used to depict them with their teeth hanging outside the mouth, the way crocodiles do. When you look at a crocodile, modern crocodile, the teeth project outside of the mouth. But now they're saying, based on our recent finds, we think that was wrong. The dinosaurs, their teeth were actually inside the mouth. So they're always changing. And if they had told you that they were outside the mouth <clears throat> and you said no, they would have said you're crazy. This is what we know. This is what we found. But now they themselves are saying no, that's not correct. So they're always changing anyway. It's a moving target. Okay, one more. Brigapati, you had um, something burning. You mentioned how the original hog is Faraha, <clears throat> and the hogs of today are like a prototype. Is that the correct word? Of a so is, is there an original dog, an original cat, an original bird? And there's like, are there 8 million 400, because we have 8 million 400,000 species here, distinct species, according to the Vedas, right, here in the material world. So are those 8 million 400,000 species originally in the spiritual world? And we're just experiencing prototypes of them? In terms of originally in the spiritual world, I always wondered to myself, like here we have centipedes and millipedes. So they have centipedes and millipedes on Goloka? I don't know. But yes, there are, are there are original cats and dogs in this material world that are created. Just like the example I like to use is Kashyapamuni and his 13 daughters of Daksha that he married. So from each daughter, he gave birth to different species. Just like the daughter of Vinata, <clears throat> she gave birth to birds, the chief of whom is Garuda. That's why he's known as Vinatea. <coughs> Excuse me, son of Vinata. And then you have um, another wife that gave birth to horses. So yes, there is an original horse form in the material world for sure. Now whether all of those forms exist in the spiritual world, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if there are scorpions and centipedes and Goloka Vrindavan. Technically we, we, we would say yes because again, they're, they're, everything that's in the material world is a re reflection of what's in the spiritual world. But I don't know if all of those you know, lower forms that we would would run away from that would, are existing there. Cats, dogs, yes. That we know. Trees. But every life form, I don't know. They're all there in the spiritual world. Okay. It's time. 831. Grantaraj Shema Bhagavatam Kijai. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Gorbaktamri.